Hello, and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 13 of 25 Days of Tonalism, Volume 2. The painting that uh, I've done a study after today is by George Ines, and the title is Landscape. Maybe it has another title, maybe it doesn't. I really don't know. It's actually pretty cool painting. It's, it's almost psychedelic, his painting, oh, yeah, I, I think, it, yeah. and um, really exemplifies uh, some of the innovations of tonalism uh, that, uh, you know, mostly, I, I, well, we don't want to say mostly. There were a lot of contributors to, to tonalism, but George Ness, in his fevered vision, I think, uh, was really when he was on he was really on and uh, one of the great things about something like this painting here is the way the uh, the color has been pushed into uh, overdrive and um, sure it's a false scene or whatever but you know I don't know if this scene actually exists anywhere or ever did because it seems to be such an archetypical type of scene it's looks to me to be one of his later works and probably based a good portion of it on memory um, anyway it's an uh, awesome painting and George Ness of course is totally awesome especially when he's on and um, funny enough I uh, I did a uh, two George Ness studies this last week uh, we finished up um, 25 days, well we didn't finish up, actually we finished up the first color pass of the uh, next 25 paintings that we'll be doing, uh, well it'll be down the road a ways, uh, quite a ways actually, but that's okay because um, I still have to do a second color pass on all of them, but yeah, it's a bit of a milestone because uh, let's face it, 80-90% uh, of the work is done in that first color pass and uh, that 20% uh, that I might do in the subsequent uh, pass. Yeah, you need a little texture here, a little... Uh, in some cases it's much easier to paint a tree over a background when the background's dry. Things like that. So, um, that that can, you know, I could, I could pull that uh, uh, 25 Days of Tonalism Volume 3 uh, to conclusion quite rapidly if I needed to. Um, since the first color pass is done on everything. And uh, that's cool. I wanted to. to uh, um, I, I ended up not really working on Friday, so I wanted to have something concluded uh, in the studio that week. And now uh, the other thing, um, I think I'm pretty much done. I have six uh, new larger paintings I've done, and those are uh, all complete now. I'm going to go in today. This is Saturday, but I was out of town on Friday, so. I'm back in the um, actually in my home office right now doing this video, but I will be going in the studio this afternoon and doing a bit of liquiding and uh, maybe some prep work for the upcoming week, kind of getting my my ducks lined up um, so I can shoot them down. And um, so I want to get a coat of final coat of liquid on some of these uh, uh, that I finished uh, last week and. Um, that way I can do some photography on the probably uh, Monday. I'm thinking Monday because actually Monday is going to be another day pretty much going to be um, not much done in the studio I don't think. Maybe there will be. We'll see. I've got to uh, go down to the museum here and uh, help them take down the show which is uh, going to be concluding on Sunday uh, which is tomorrow here uh, will be the last day. So. Uh, if you haven't got a flight uh, over here, um, it might be too late. But um, <laughs> anyway, it was a, a really uh, good experience doing the museum show. And um, I had some real positive feedback. And a few people wanted to buy paintings and stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see if something comes out of it. I, I really don't mind either way. Um, the, uh, the, the reason for doing a show in a museum is just to get your work out there and um, um, share it with people and that's been done and I'm real happy with the end result and um, 
you know we're moving forward always forward so like I say I've got another uh, six uh, paintings done and uh, some of them are really good uh, they're all actually none of them are bad so I feel good about that and I have uh, some 5 by 7 studies I'm probably gonna be doing maybe mm, I've got like uh, four four or five by seven studies that I was thinking of developing into larger paintings so um, but I'm also chomping at the bit because I've uh, gone through a lot of uh, uh, my reference and composited quite a lot of uh, reference for uh, you know to be fodder for new paintings um, and I'm actually really anxious to jump into that and start doing that but uh, we'll see we'll see um, I have been uh, really uh, doing some major innovating and um, uh, a really huge creative part of my process which is for the most part invisible uh, here on YouTube is the work that I put into uh, preparation for my reference and um, uh, since I consider myself to be a synthetic painter not a naturalistic painter um, that's all good you know that's how I am and that's how I roll. Um, interestingly though, uh, on my little trip I was out in a couple of used bookstores and uh, got a couple interesting books on Constable who is just one of my favorite all-time painters. Not a tonalist actually, uh, really more of a naturalist I would say. He was into depicting color very in a very natural manner and he was also into depicting things the way that he saw them and he is absolutely great and he's really the father of what became the Barbizon movement. He, uh, his paintings being um, exhibited in France was one of the major things that sparked yeah, the uh, the Barbizon guys into doing what they did. And uh, he really invented the modern landscape painting uh, in so many ways. He was, you know, he knew about the greatness of the Dutch guys and he knew about the greatness of people like Claude Lorraine but he didn't feel constrained in any way by their legacy. Um, while they had an influence on him, he was really, really big on doing uh, studies direct from nature. And um, God bless him, those are some of his best things, really. And uh, uh, I just uh, I had some time, like I say, I uh, was out of the uh, house and uh, staying, uh, staying at a little bit of breakfast and I uh, was reading through these books I bought just so amazed and impressed with his output and you know at some point I'd like to do some studies after some uh, constables actually after more of his sketches than his full-blown scenes because some of his uh, completed work he was in there doing these six-foot uh, paintings and to be honest the um, interesting thing about constable is that you know uh, you know we look at him as being part of a tradition now but when he was working he was really well and truly a revolutionary and many people didn't know how to take his work at all there was nothing else like it around and uh, I have noticed that if some people don't know how to look at certain styles of art that they haven't uh, been exposed to before uh, I run into that quite a lot here in New Zealand where people aren't uh, you know aware of the tonalist tradition at all or or even uh, Barbizon painters like Camille Corot you know you you do get some sophisticated people that are knowledgeable of art history that would know about the Barbizon guys but even they are not really aware of American tonalism and um, for that reason uh, I think someone that does have an appreciation and, and connoisseurship of art history uh, will will take to tonalism right away but um, a lot of lay people sometimes uh, it takes them well to uh, to get used to it and uh, I've experienced people coming in my studio and just talking to me and then after just uh, you know uh, being exposed to the paintings there for uh, you know 20 30 minutes they start looking around going wow that stuff's this stuff's really good it's really different but I like it you know um, it's just it, I don't know it's a very interesting phenomenon and I was thinking a lot about that when I was reading this uh, constable book because uh, he was uh, well let's face it I think art history is you know it's already over it's already died we're in the post 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 modernism now and uh, post 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 modernism is uh, really for me about um, you know uh, approaching the work of the past the styles and modes of painting in the past that were the most moving and had the greatest payoff and 
and working in those modes as a modern artist. I don't see myself as a traditional artist. I, you might see that, of course, in some of my um, promotional materials because I know that's a hook that people can hang uh, my work on, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I don't see myself as a traditional artist. I see myself as a, a modern artist. I am a, an artist who's alive in modern times working, and um, I could point out all the differences between what I do and what the guys in the past have done. And, and so much of it is about a progression of seeing, and the way we see uh, is different than the way that people saw before the um, um, prevalence of you know visual imagery produced by cameras. Uh, especially color imagery uh, is now everywhere all the time and every movie uh, it has um, these uh, visual images from cameras that are stunning of course um, and oftentimes highly modified uh, and uh, influenced by things like paintings of the past uh, the color palettes and things but it's a very interesting phenomenon so um, you know uh, that's how I define my work uh, I define I see myself as a modern artist um, even though others may not, and uh, they're entitled to their opinion, of course, and uh, I'm entitled to mine. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us for day 13 here. Uh, we're getting close to the end. Um, if you like my videos and you like my channel, you should click subscribe so that uh, when I put one of these bad boys up, you know about it and you can come watch it if you like. And I do appreciate all the people that take the time to uh, watch videos. I realize that there's so many distractions in this modern world that uh, the time and attention that people give is always valuable. In fact, it's really the most valuable commodity in the modern world is time and attention. It's, much, it's worth much more than money, and it's fueling the economy if you look at sites like Google and Facebook and things like that. Also, uh, you can go to my website, landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow my blog through there. There's also a link to the blog underneath this video. And on that blog page is going to be a good resolution image of this painting I did today and uh, two detail images for you to check out. So um, skip on over there unless you're also the course of videos there. So I'll be back tomorrow with a video of my own painting and uh, one of my own paintings. And uh, meanwhile, I'd like you to take good care and stay out of trouble.